Marco Minghini from the Joint Research Center. Uh, this year I present something a bit different than uh, uh, the past. You know, I work on Inspire, which is a very uh, traditional topic uh, uh, in the European track, but uh, this year I'm presenting something that is totally different, and in particular it's about uh, EU tendering data and uh, how much open source geospatial software, open geospatial standards, open geospatial data we can find uh, there. So some context, uh, first of all. Um, so we are speaking about the Tenders Electronic Daily, or TED. This is a portal. This is also the database where all EU institutions and uh, uh, member states, public sector bodies have to uh, publish their procurement notices, at least above certain specific economic thresholds. We are speaking about uh, roughly half a million uh, notices per year roughly worth more than 400 uh, billion euros. This is to answer the needs of uh, EU directives on public procurements, which want to establish a fair and open competitive market. Uh, TED is also a cornerstone of the public procurement data space. You may have heard about data spaces uh, in Europe. What is important for this talk is that it's available as open data, uh, licensed under the European Commission reuse notice, which basically allows you to use it uh, for several purposes, including commercial. You have to download uh, several packages of XML files. You have daily files, but also monthly uh, aggregations. What is the objective here? So we wanted to develop, uh, first of all, a procedure, a general one, that could extract uh, insights from this database, in principle for any topic, and based on uh, just starting from some user-defined keywords. And we took the chance, of course, of this event to test it on use cases relevant to software, open source software, open source geospatial software, even proprietary geospatial software, open standards, open geospatial standards, open data, and open geospatial data. So this is the methodology that we adopted. So it all starts from some keywords defined by the user. We first enrich the keywords using SETA. I will come in a minute to that. Then we validate and we finalize the keywords with the help of the user. We combine, uh, we search actually the, the database using those keywords and we combine them and we extract some candidate outputs, procurements relevant to our topics, and then we validate and we refine this search using a large language models. We use it with context and without context. And finally, we get our results. So I will now move to each of those uh, phases one by one. Um, the whole procedure is written in Python. It's licensed under the European Union, public license. It's available. It's uh, uh, reproducible. There are only just some parts, like the use of uh, large language models, for which you would need a token that, of course, you, 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 you would not have because it's using an internal API. But I mean, you can still access the code. We also provide a portion of the database, which is gigantic, so that you can really experiment a bit with, the, with that. So from now on, I will focus on one use case that is the one on open source geospatial software to illustrate, just to illustrate the methodology, and then I will show results for all the use cases. So I said it all starts from some keywords. In this case, we define three groups of keywords. Keywords around open source software in general, keywords around geospatial, and keywords around open source geospatial software. We do that, then we enrich those keywords given by the user using SETA. As I said, SETA stands for Semantic Text Analyzer. It's a text mining tool developed at the GRC that was trained in the past on hundreds of thousands of documents from the EU. EU laws, EU publications, EU open data portal, the CORDIS, uh, uh, portal uh, uh, that is uh, um, including information on uh, EU-funded uh, research and innovation projects, and so on. So it basically gives us a list of synonyms and related keywords that, base, that are based on the EU terminology, the EU context. So we get a lot of keywords. Actually, you see just a, a screenshot here with the very first uh, portion uh, of, of those. And then, basically, we ask the user to refine those keywords um, and to finalize them. So in this example, we have a first column here with all keywords uh, about open source, so like uh, synonyms and related keywords. Second, key second set of keywords about geospatial. You see geomatics, geoinformatics, GIS, etc. 
And here we have a column with all the names of OS Geo software projects plus other open source uh, geospatial um, projects. The idea is that first we search the database uh, independently, separately for all these groups of keywords. Each row here is a procurement, so there's some text that we scan and then we um, identify keywords if present and then we combine them. So we define some rules. In this case, we basically say that a procurement may be related to open source geospatial software if it includes um, a keyword from the, let's say, the set of keywords around open source software and a keyword from the geospatial set of keywords or just one of the names of the software tools, right? If I find QGIS, I uh, imagine this is related to open source software. And then we have our, let's say, candidate list of procurement. So we extract only those for which we have a true uh, answer. Good. And then I say we refine the search with the large language models. For that, we use an internal platform called GPT at JRC. This was set up some months ago as a platform to support, actually, JRC uh, researchers to uh, te text uh, to investigate the pros and cons, the challenges, the opportunities of AI, generative AI, large language models. We have several GPT, well, several large language models available. We have uh, GPT models, uh, 3.5, 4, etc. We have other, several other uh, open source models, including new experimental models, and uh, we have, uh, of course, a, a way to access to them through API. For this exercise, we use the Mixtral model. This is uh, by NOSE Research. It's open source under Apache 2.0. Um, it runs at the JRC. Something good about this platform is that uh, even the GPT models, actually there's an agreement according to which all the results generated actually stay at the JRC, so are not actually reused um, by OpenAI. And uh, this actually provides a very good performance and allows us also to really use a lot of tokens to that are, this is very suitable to our purpose because as I said, the database is uh, huge. So what do we do here? We ask a question for the classification. First of all, we use a temperature equal to 0 0.1 for those of you that are less familiar with the large language model. So the lower the value of the temperature and the lower is the chance that the results are somehow random. I mean, probabilistically speaking, random. So we try to have, let's say, robust uh, results and we always keep temperature low. The, the question we ask in this case it's, is the following. Does the content of the following uh, text focus on using or providing services based on GIS or geospatial open source software? Tell me the probability of a yes answer. So some examples here. This is a, an example of a true answer, probability 0 0.8. This is a procurement actually about a client application to develop, but there's a, an explicit condition to use open source and to do a web GIS. This is a false answer because we found uh, Geos, that of course one, was one of the keywords, but Geos here is just the name or part of the name of a company, so it's rightly classified as false. Then what we do, we also add some context. So we try without context and with context. Context means we give additional information to the model to actually better understand, in this case, what is open source uh, geospatial software, which in principle should help uh, it uh, uh, provide the right uh, uh, classification. Um, so some examples here, there was, here there's a true answer that actually becomes false after adding the context. Uh, here again, it speaks about free software. There's cartography, but also cartography here looks like the name of a company. Um, of course, uh, some, something important. We are just looking at the text of the procurement, not at what will happen next. So what, how the contract that they work foreseen by the contract will be implemented. We are just looking at the procurement, right? Uh, this is an example of a true answer that becomes false. Uh, that's interesting because this is a contract actually awarded to 52 North Initiative for Geospatial Open Source Software that we know is a German company, very much involved in open source. But again, the procurement itself is not about open source. With the context, the output for this specific category uh, decreases by 21%. Now, let me move to all the results for all the categories. First, we process the TED database only for two years, 21 and 22. 
Um, I mentioned at the beginning that we roughly have uh, half a million records per year in TED. Here we have roughly half of these. The reason is that we only consider the procurements with an award notice. So procurement for which a contract was actually awarded to someone. That's why the numbers are lower. But you see, in total, we have roughly half a million records, so pretty huge number. Here for the seven topics, you see the uh, number of potential, the candidate uh, outputs just with the keyword search. With the large language model, you see, of course, we have a decrease, even big decrease, 94% here. If we add the context, uh, we have uh, an additional decrease, just one exception. I will try to say something later on that. For proprietary geospatial software, we have an increase here. I will comment later on on that. Uh, let's have a look at some results uh, for the keywords. Again, the keywords corresponding to each of the initial sets of keywords that I, uh, that I showed you, but only extracted from the procurement that we uh, achieve at the end, so after the classification of, uh, with a large language model. So if we look among all the procurements that were actually relevant, either to open source geospatial software, geospatial data, and geospatial standards, the war, so about the, the, the group of keyword geospatial, we have GIS actually emerging, uh, so the keyword that mostly appears, and then spatial data, geospatial, etc. Open source software, so we have here open source, uh, Linux, and then you see a lot of other terms that actually appear uh, rarely. Um, open source, it's actually 120 times. Open source geospatial software, so here the numbers are very low. You see, QGIS wins here, but it's only, it appears only six times. Of course, this is when QGIS is mentioned in the procurement. Same is for PostGIS, GeoServer degree, etc. Next slide is about the proprietary geospatial software. Um, this is the result. You see, ESRI appears more than 100 times. RGIS, roughly 100 times. Of course, most of the times they appear in the same procurements. Autodesk, Small World, MapInfo, etc. Why is that? I will comment later on. Open standards, we have keywords such as interoperability emerging here about 20 times, open standard, interoperable, etc. Of course, this doesn't mean that uh, there may be several procurements that at the end were whose contract was actually implemented using open standards. Again, this is just about the analysis of the text in the procurements. Open geospatial standards, here we have OGC, but only appearing four times. And then some OGC standards, CTGML, GeoTIFF, etc. Open data, we have open data emerging, of course. Open access, open government, and uh, little uh, for the other keywords. Open geospatial data, that was a category similar to the category of the list of open source geospatial uh, software uh, projects. Uh, it included keywords like OpenStreetMap, Natural Earth, and something more, but we didn't uh, find anything significant, actually. There were some procurements with uh, OpenStreetMap, for example, but these were not classified as yes by the large language models. Conclusions. Um, so from the point of view of the content, so what did we find? Um, so there is some open source, let's say some open geospatial, open source, geospatial software, open geospatial data, open geospatial standards in there limited. Um, of course, we are considering procurements about anything, not just procurements about digital solutions about software. It's all procurements in the EU. It would be interesting to study the evolution over time, clearly. We only looked at two years, not enough to really see whether there is any trend. Um, now, proprietary geospatial software is more present than open source. I, we try to give some um, explanations to that or some ideas, reflections. Of course, others would be welcome. First, it might be that proprietary software is more popular than open source in the public sector. This could be the case, at least in some countries. Um, but some procurements explicitly address the purchase of licenses. So it's not really a procurement on doing something with the software, but only to purchase license. And of course, we do not have the, uh, the, the, the counterpart for open source, because there is no license, of course. Then, as I said before, we are only looking at uh, one portion of the uh, broad picture, that is the procurement side. We don't know how the contracts uh, corresponding to those procurements were eventually implemented. So it could be that open source software, uh, hopefully, has been used in several other procurements, of course. So 
this is just to try to explain the numbers. In terms of the methodology, well, that is, of course, useful to capture what is going on, because I think we got some insights. It's reusable, <clears throat> so in principle, you can use um, it with other topics, but also you can reuse the same with other databases. We are actually experimenting it on databases for publications, um, for uh, projects. Uh, you, you can do it basically on any piece of text. About large language models themselves, uh, it's clear, clearly, they are excellent tools because a couple of years ago, this would not have been even thinkable. Um, so very good, of course. Uh, from this exercise, we understood that we really need to understand their behavior uh, fully. Um, this has yet to come. We are using them also for other projects, and uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult and, and tricky to actually understand and play with them. Some issues, well, the usual hallucinations of the model, sometimes sensitivity to the question. So sometimes if we just change one word uh, or something in the context or one word in the question, the answer is completely different. I will show an example later. Uh, sometimes if we add the context, uh, as, as I showed you before, the, a, a question whose answer was false becomes true for proprietary geospatial software. This is, um, and we check manually. This is especially on procurements focused on purchasing licenses. So I will, I will have an example later on. First, let me go to this case. So that was what we could define as an incorrectly classified record. So this was for open geospatial data. The question here was, does the content of the following procurement focus on the sharing or use of open geospatial data? And what is the probability? The answer here was false. Actually, you, you can probably read, there's a sentence here saying, it is necessary to use license-free map data, preferably OpenStreetMap. The procurement is very long. This is just a, a portion of that. So the, the answer is false because the text does not focus. You know, we use the word, does the text focus on the sharing or use? And it's false, actually. But if we just change a word in the question or some words, does the content of the following text focus even partially or does the content of the text mention the sharing or use, then it becomes true. So, you know, it's a bit tricky. Um, you, you, you may say, well, it correctly classified it as false because it does not focus. So, you know, you, you, we need to uh, learn how to interpret that. That's another example about the license uh, um, topic here. So, um, the, the question here was, does the content of the procurement focus on using or providing services based on GIS or geospatial proprietary software? This was a procurement on purchasing several licenses, including for Autodesk, which is the keyword that was found here. So without uh, <clears throat> the context, the answer was false, saying that the text does not focus on using or providing services based on GIS. For some reason, if we add the context, and actually in the context, we do not m explicitly mention the word license. This is something I checked uh, uh, a posteriori because I thought, okay, maybe I mentioned. No, I didn't. But then it bec the answer becomes true if we just add this, uh, saying that the text the focuses on providing services based on proprietary software. Um, the text also includes information about the maintenance and updating of IT systems, which may involve geospatial proprietary software. So, could be a bit confusing, actually, um, or at least I would say if, given in the, 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 in the previous case where there was OpenStreetMap, it said false, I would expect a false also here, but here we have true. So what is the conclusion here? That this is very powerful, of course, I think we should all learn from that. This is a process. We are, again, working on, on them for several different projects. I think it's just the beginning of, of the process, and uh, also I'm very happy to hear your uh, experience and, and reflections on that. With that, I close, and thank you very much. Hello, hello. Thank you very much. It was a very interesting talk. Um, I've never thought about doing something like this before. We have time for some questions. Anybody, hands up? Do I see a sea of hands? No. Uh, can I do one? Um, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's not uh, fully related to the work, but looking at the uh, the way uh, the p procurements are done, how do you feel about uh, institutions requiring a specific 
piece of software to be used, like looking at the ESRI graphs, looking at, and in that sense, even, even with the QGIS solutions. So institutions going out and saying that we want a solution that is based on this and this piece of software. How do you feel about that? Well, so first, this is an exercise that could be interesting to do because we just extracted uh, how much this happens, but not from whom this happens. This is something that, of course, is in the database. So we may be able also to extract and to try to understand if there is any trend also maybe ongoing in Europe on who is actually requiring uh, ESRI or proprietary software in general, who is actually more on QGIS or, or who is mentioning OGC, for example. Um, and that would probably share also some interesting insights on the, yeah, on the European landscape. Uh, as you can see, you know, it, it's a huge database. We only uh, process two years. Of course, the idea is to continue uh, and to extend it to other years. But indeed, there is so much that we can learn uh, from that in principle. And uh, large language models with all their limitations and their you know, still ongoing understanding uh, is, is a friend here. Uh, they answer you what you tell them. <laughs> exactly. In a way. Uh, you know, it, this is a, it's, it's a balance now that we, you, you, we need to find, but still I think we extract the main, the main picture here, which is the important, of course. And we don't look at the, you know, the, the, the real numbers. We look at the, the big numbers here and or the order of magnitude, and I think it's, it's clear. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh. Uh, thank you, Marco. Uh, a question, do you know of um, any of the procurements that enforce uh, the use of open source software and uh, how it might affect also, or you might check for, um, for the different uh, classes there of, of procurements, those that are maybe enforcing? I think ESA sometimes, or always, um, I'm not sure, um, tries to to enforce the use of open source or the, the software that is created at least uh, during the, um, the, the projects that they, uh, they fund. I think also like uh, the software we produce at the, the commission that's supposed to be uh, open source as well. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good point. Um, as I said, we mostly focus here on the methodology, which was the main reason to do all of this, um, try to m create something that was reproducible and reusable across several domains and across several databases. Um, we are using it for other uh, commission databases and JRC databases. Um, we didn't look so much at the actual institutions or at the actual content because, of course, uh, there, there, there was no not much time, but also, you know, it's a huge database. So that is, uh, for sure, a follow-up uh, uh, analysis that would be very interesting to do and to really see who uh, is asking and whether they are enforcing the use of open source. You know, sometimes it's explicitly mentioned. I sh showed in an example, you shall use open source. Other times, I have the feeling this is not mentioned, but maybe, and, well, that's my, that's my idea, the work would then be done using open source, uh, which I think is a good message uh, here. Of course, it's not, it's not verified. We should, uh, and it's not even easy to, to verify it. 